Oh, we're going to sing Amazing Grace tonight, so I need some help. That's all we're going to do. One minute. Well, it's good to be in God's house tonight, and I'm going to ask everybody to stand that will and, and turn to page 479. Brother Madison is out west, so Brother Shiloh, if you come on. Thank you. Well, good evening. It's a great blessing to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. And even though we're few in number, we're still going to have a good time in the Lord. My notes out here. All right. Uh, Madison, he called me and said he was going to be gone, and I said, okay. Uh, he said, I, I, I want you to preach for me Wednesday night. And I said, all right. And... Uh, I started praying, and uh, we're right now enter, entering into the season. Uh, as you can tell, Christmas has pretty well exploded, and I really have a hard time. My wife says I can be a Scrooge, and uh, that that's uh, that's normal. I think a lot of times because we get so 
wound up in the world. And I think probably the reason that I am the way I am a lot of times is because I look at the world and how things are, and to me it just seems like folks don't have the joy that they had. And as you grow older, you come from a child filled with such wonder and, and waking up on Christmas and, you know, just being so excited. And then as you get older and people start leaving and, and, and going on and things start happening, you kind of lose what you had when you were younger. Now, I don't know if that's the same with everybody, but it is the way with me, I know. And, and that's what the Lord's laid on my heart tonight we need to renew our joy in him and uh, if you have your Bibles I'm not going to be long I've, I've studied on this and, and just got a few short pieces of scripture and uh, I, I'm not going to try to hold you long because I know folks want to get back to their families um, we're going to be in the book of Acts going to be in the book of Acts tonight and Acts chapter 3 is where we're starting. Acts chapter 3. I'll say this before we get in the Word. You know, when somebody comes to know Jesus, there's a change. There's a definite change in our hearts, in our lives, in our the way we do business, there's a change, and it's definite. It's, it's noticeable real quick. I know when I got saved, people looked at me different, just like most everybody here. I'm sure when you got saved, got right with the Lord, things happened, and there was a change there. And where we're going to start, Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I just pray that you just come into this place tonight, Lord. God, we just love you and we praise you. And we just thank you for this time, Lord, to worship you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that your house be filled. Lord, we pray for special traveling graces for each and every one not here tonight. Heavenly Father God, I just pray that you just use this message, Lord, to glorify you and build up your kingdom. God, we just love you and praise you. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the scripture that I want us to look at right here, starting in verse 8, And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. He was happy. All right, everybody, there ain't many folks here. Smile, grin, he is happy. Are y'all happy? Amen? I'm happy. I'm glad to be here. I'm so proud that the Lord has given me another day. Now, I'm going to tell you, time change this time has been an absolute nightmare for me. This has been the hardest time I've ever had in my life, swapping over, getting back on this time. I was not happy about it, and it was very, very, very hard for me to get that air worked back out, and I'm still having trouble, but with the Lord's help, we'll make it. We need to get happy again. I see so many people every day, and they are so pitiful in the way that they are. My wife will tell you I get that way. I am not immune to it. I get that way. And if you ever see me out in town and I don't look happy, jerk me up by the shirt collar and say, Listen, you've got the Lord. You ought to be tickled to death. And 
if you do that, I'm not going to say that you won't be wrote up for harassment, but it might happen. Uh, in this day and time, you never know. But uh, we need to get happy. We need to be happy because we've got Jesus. We've got the greatest thing in the world, folks. There's nothing greater than the gift of God. And how can we share that gift when we look like a bunch of miserable old so-and-sos that don't want to do nothing but sit on their hands? We need to get happy. Turn with me now over to Acts chapter 8, verse 37. Now, this bit of scripture here, Philip was witnessing to the Ethiopian here, and... Uh, he was talking to this man, and, and this man was interested in God. He wanted to know about the Lord. And it's my earnest belief that this world wants to know about God. But we've got to be willing to get out of our comfort zone sometimes and share Jesus like he called us to. Starting there in verse 37, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. In verse 39 there, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Right there. Again, he was happy. He was tickled to death. He had something that nobody could take away from him. And I think for a lot of the time, Christians get the mentality, I've got Jesus, but I don't know what to do with him. I've got Jesus, but I don't know what to do with him. Well, let me tell you what to do with him. Share him with somebody else. Give him to somebody else. Let me tell you about the greatest thing that I know, and that's Jesus. Let me tell you about what he's done in my life and the goodness of God and what's happened in my life. Don't take that as bragging, but give them the truth. Give them God. You ain't got to be a preacher to give people Jesus. Don't ever think that. I mean, I know in places of business, Every day, people come in, and Miss Dina, I guarantee you, you see them every day. They, there's lots of folks in this world need Jesus, and there's lots of folks in this world are standing there as an open invitation for a witness. But we, in our mentality, well, I've got the Lord, but I don't know what to do with him. First things first, let's get happy. Let's get some fire behind us. You know, somebody asked me one time, they said, are you one of them hellfire brimstone Baptist preachers? I said, no, not hardly. I said, but I'll tell you right now, I'm a blood of Jesus Baptist preacher, and if you want to know what the best thing in the world is, let me tell you about it. It's Jesus. If you want to know about what, he can do for you just sit down here with me a minute and I'll tell you because I can tell you what he's done for me and I know the Mary Pitt that I got brought out of I can't speak for anybody else but I know where I was at and he reached right down heard a preacher say one time mercy and grace was on the way back walking from a funeral run into judgment they judgment looked and said mercy grace where you been he said, oh, we've been to the funeral. He said, who, wh wh who are you burying? He said, the sins of so-and-so. He said, well, well where would you bury him at? I need to know. Mercy and Grace looked and said, oh, we forgot. That's what Jesus does for you, folks. He forgets. We'll trust in him, and he'll give us that joy. You want peace that passes all understanding? Let's, let, let's, let's re, regroup and look at how good Jesus is to us. We're starting into the Christmas season, and, and we, uh, we really need, in this time of 
pandemics and all the things that are going on in the world, we really need to renew our joy. We need to renew our hope. We need to renew our love. That's what it all boils down to. We need to renew our love, not only for our fellow man, not only for our husbands, our wives, our kids, but we need to renew our love for the Lord. Because there's nothing more joyful than getting to love people. And I guess that's why I enjoy being able to stand for the Lord because I genuinely have a love for people. And anybody that I've ever got to preach to in my life, I really earnestly hope that before it's too late, they get on their knees and they give their heart to the Lord. Because nothing will do my heart better than to stand before Almighty God one of these days and see the people that I've had the chance to witness to. That ought to be every one of our goals here tonight. We all ought to be able to stand before Almighty God one of these days. And when he starts counting them off, this one's yours, that one's yours, it's going to be so sweet to know and meet the people that we have helped and that have watched us. That's what it's going to be, folks. There's going to be lots more people coming to know the Lord watching what we do than they'll ever said in this sanctuary. I said I was going to be quick, and I think this is the quickest I've ever been. But uh, I think that's, that's sufficient. We need to get happy. I'll let, I, I, we'll, we'll break it down real quick right here. We need to get happy. We need to be the true witness for God that we're supposed to be. But they ain't but one person can do any of that and that's between you and God so as we enter this Christmas season and we get to experience the goodness of God one more day one more year one more time let's be joyful let's show our love and appreciation not only to each other but let's show our love and appreciation to God for what we have been blessed so much with. I get to thank it a lot of times when I'm off and away and by myself and in the truck and not having to talk to anybody and, and anything. How good God has truly been. The blessings that we have. And I can stand here flat-footed and say I don't deserve anything more than an eternity in hell. But God loved me enough. And he instilled such a joy and a peace in my heart. If he had never blessed me with the single solitary blessing that I have and given me the joy and the peace that I have, it would still be too much. But I'm sure thankful he did. I'm sure thankful that God thought enough of me to give me what I've got. The material stuff is irrelevant. But the joy, the peace, the love that I have now is worth it all. Let's all stand. I don't know. I know there's lots of needs. I know there's several prayer requests. Remember the Gibson family. Uh, Miss Edith Gibson passed away. Uh, Urban Free family, uh, several folks in this community burying loved ones, the Galloways, here in the next few days. Remember all these, and uh, it's an awful hard time to be burying loved ones right here around Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, remember Jim's grandmother, Gail Beck. Um, we have several needs, and remember the, our ministry. We have unspoken request that we'd like to help praying about. Is there anybody else? Because we're going to dismiss here. We're going to pray. If there's a prayer request, let, let it be known. Anybody? All right. We're going to pray. If you feel the need to come up here and get on your knees in the altar, come on. If not, we're going to pray right now. 
Dear Lord, God, we love you. Lord, and I just pray that you just help us to renew our joy, renew our peace, Lord God, and just go with us in this season, Heavenly Father. God, I pray for this church. I pray for Brother Madison, Lord. I pray that you just help to get everything back to a semi-normal state, Heavenly Father. God, I just pray for full church houses. I pray for good godly men, Lord, to lead and guide, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just love you and I praise you. Lord, and I thank you for this opportunity to stand one more time. Lord God, I just pray that you just take this word and apply it to our hearts. Lord, just keep us and guide us. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't run off. Brother Thad's got something he needs to talk to you about.